Hello everyone and sorry about possible wind noise. Uh, I was asked to do a little finishing video for the Audi A2 project. Um, I think the last video was last year before we left for Sweden and uh, meanwhile the car is, what do you call it, certified or inspected to be roadworthy by TÜV Nord in Göttingen. So let's just uh, do a quick summary of how this machine works. Okay, let's start down here with the motor. And the motor is actually a transmission, a hybrid transmission from a Toyota Prius. I got it completely for free, and if you don't, it'll set you back like 200 euros. It, uh, it's got two motors inside, but I'm just using one of them. And here you see I fabricated uh, a torque arm. And if we turn over ground, um, there's a cross member running all the way from here to there and then the transmission is kind of suspended from that with the two rubber mounts. And down here we've got the temperature sensor and resolver. Next we come to the inverter. Uh, that is also the stock Prius inverter. In Germany it's quite important uh, to have a matching pair of motor and inverter that have been certified together. So, this box actually contains two inverters, we're just using one, the stronger one. As you can see it's uh, water-cooled, it's got its own reservoir and we're also running the cooling hoses back here to use the waste heat for cabin heat, which isn't a lot, but it's all that we've got. In winter, we can close this valve here, and that means the coolant no longer circulates through the radiator, but only through the inside. DC-DC converter. So the part that turns the high voltage DC into low voltage DC for our 12 volt system, well, guess what? It's also contained in here. And what's next? Charger. You see it's currently charging. I'm not using a Type 2 inlet because it wouldn't fit. I would have had, I would have had to fit it into the fuel tank or the fuel filler um, thing, but I couldn't be bothered, so I'm just using a... What's it called? Manicus? No. Vlant. It's, uh, it's used with solar microinverters a lot, so I'm using one of these, just bought it in here. Makes a nice short cable run um, to the charger. So here we have some charging logic, um, RCD, in case there's a ground fault, because the charger is not isolated, and guess what? It's also contained in here. So, you can see it. It goes in here into the former AC compressor inverter, uh, which now acts as a rectifier. And then in here, as stock, we've got a bug boost converter, and we're using it to boost the voltage up to from grid voltage to battery voltage. Um, yeah, all the logic is handled by this uh, Prius controller here, the one which you know from the open inverter shop. And just one addition for everyone who watched the previous videos. You might be able to spot that the inverter and also the transmission have shifted to the left and to the back a bit. Um, and that's because the way it was installed before was too far forward and uh, too far up. So the drive shafts were really, really bent and were noisy and yeah, wouldn't have lasted very long. So. Basically all we needed to do is um, we swap the drive shafts left to right. The length difference was less than I thought. And that allowed us to come to the left a bit. And that allowed us to avoid steering or brake boostery stuff, whatever that is. Uh, and move to the back a bit by moving this cross member. Oh yeah, and while we're here, uh, you can see the 12 volt battery, which used to be lead acid and very heavy, and used to reside in the back, now resides in the front, and is a much lighter 
Lithium-Ion-Phosphate battery. And just for completeness, here is the brake vacuum pump mounted in a bracket here. And also using the stock wire harness to be run. The car will also have um, AC, air conditioning. And we mounted a leaf AC compressor. Uh, we used the inverter as a junction box, forked it off in here. The high voltage orange cable and um, it's LIN bus controlled. So the little white cable down here contains 12 volt and LIN bus and is controlled by a VCU. Um, yeah, I could show you where the VCU is. I'm just going to hint it here because there have been earlier detailed videos which uh, show this in more detail. Uh, the VCU is basically under the floor carpet here and I've reused all the existing wiring with new signals. Um, so here you saw, see I just bought the counterpart for the various connectors here which all follow a common standard and used it for our purposes. Next up, the battery. Um, so, yeah, since you're maybe new to this project, I'm not doing this only for myself, but I'm doing it for a friend of mine, because I'm in, not in need of another conversion, actually. And, yeah, so he said he doesn't need the rear seats, I can remove them, and that made it much easier to, to fit the batteries. So the batteries are like in the first three quarters of the box, and then like starting here, we've got various switch gear and BMS and yeah, various housekeeping stuff. Um, the battery continues underground a bit. So I've cut out the metal underneath the seats, which, which is not structural because this is an aluminium chassis. And here is the other part of the battery. We've got um, 20 modules down there and 24 modules on top of it. No, that's not right mathematically. It's somehow different. More on top than on the bottom. And we've got, a, got it covered here with some aluminium. Yeah, it's kind of a tight fit because I don't know what this is called. Uh, the transmit the, this actually swings up and down, the axle, let's call it axle, and it's very close to actually hitting the aluminium, but it doesn't. And then here you can see the DC cables run back to front, and I've had to add um, a cable duct to be conformant here. And last but not least, um, I will show you the car has got to travel 400 uh, kilometers to get to its destination. And that would take a very long time on its, uh, let's call it stock, 3 kilowatt charger. So I decided to put the charge port on the left side, which is the right side, not the right side, which is the wrong side. And I've installed our little open inverter CCS controller down there and some makeshift cabling. Also port relays are in the, in the box here um, so that we are able to use CCS for charging on the trip. And I will remove this once we've arrived, it's not needed anymore. So yeah. As you can see, while charging, um, the car is basically fired up. We are using the fuel gauge uh, in, as its intended purpose to show the battery state of charge. Um, yeah, the rev counter shows us the regen level, and I will show you that in a minute when you go for a test drive. And to drive it, we still need the key and need to turn it on. That basically turns on the car, and then here we made a little 
gear selector. So pushing here puts us in reverse gear. And the rev counter now shows us that we are ready to drive and that we are in region level 2. I can go back to neutral. No longer ready to drive and also the power steering pump has shut off now. And finally Audi is charging as well. There's never been a, a real issue. Oh, it, it does require some manual intervention from time to time because I'm gatewaying the charge limits um, from the BMS via Wi-Fi to CAN. And that kind of struggles to stay alive. Anyway, um, yeah, back to some current now. And uh, I was borrowed a, a nice uh, thermal camera so I can watch the sort of sketchy connector down there. It's just some aluminium tubes, 8 millimeters, stuck into the connector. And as you can see, they do heat up. It's, uh, the lower one is at 66 degrees now.
soon as you're charging. 